Well, Nitroplanes introduced its ProJet Nitro 003 recently. I needed a better camera plane, so I thought I would try this one. I didn't have as much luck with the Big Reaper as a photo bird, so decided to go with this smaller RQ-11 military field drone to see if it would support my camera better. The equipment I chose was a 3.3 amp 11.1 LiPo with Proton 40 amp speed controller, two TP Pro Metal Gear 90 servos, and the Exceed brushless motor. The first step was to CA the round hinge material to the control surfaces on the rudder and elevator. Next, since the surfaces are controlled by push-pull cables, control horns must be installed on both sides of the control surface. The fuselage is a fiberglass tube, so make sure to remove the plastic covering on the surface before gluing it to the elevator because it won't stick otherwise. Next, make the cable clevises and attach them to the control horns where they'll be. Make them all at once. Now prepare the cables. First put in the servos, then push the tail boom into the body. From this point you must measure the cables and cut them. Rudder is shorter than the elevator. Make sure to measure twice and cut once. The cables are plastic coated and simply installed by crimping the brass tubing and creasing them with dikes. Don't crease too hard though. Both ends of the brass tubes are clogged with brass so an exacto knife is how I got them cleaned out. I found the elevator cable connector catching on the tail tube, so I cut a slot for more room. I also put a drop of electric glue on each cable to keep it straight. Make the cables taut, but not too tight. This takes some patience, so take your time. Now that the cables were installed, I rotated the tail straight, drilled two holes for the screws to hold the tail boom in place. The speed controller had different size connectors than the motor, so I had to change them. I'm glad the motor came with the proper connectors, however. And it's a good idea to test all your equipment first. After bolting the motor to the mounting plate, drill and screw the plate to the body. After building it, I attached some 100 mile an hour race tape to the wingtips and bottom of fuselage to protect the beautiful paint job. Since the control horn touches the ground, I decided to make a tail skid to protect it. This would be wise for you to do too, or a few landings are going to break it off or wear it off. Also, in order for me to get it to balance, I had to add 6 ounces of clay to the nose with the battery as far forward as it would go. You must do this. The plans say to simply screw this side hatch on with a tiny screw. It'd be easy to lose the screw and a pain to have the screw this battery hatch on each time you hook up the battery. So I made my own latch from a servo arm. Okay, I'm going to be in and out of this compartment a lot. So uh, this is where I plug the battery in. This is the battery. I've got it secured here. And I'm just going to show you this little latch that I made. It makes it a lot easier. I left the screw in. I glued it in. Made the hole a little bigger so I have a guide there. And this just plugs in uh, to the back like this. And then you push this in up here into the hole. And now my setup is just to use this control horn and I can put it on there temporarily or if I want to put it on, I snap it over top of the head of the screw and that's the way I'm going to fly it, like that. And then when it's time to take it off, just pull it up like this, pull that out, grab a hold of it, drop it out. Piece of cake. Okay, let's go fly. It's 17 degrees out and the wind is 7 mile per hour. Perfect.
other than my hands being totally froze. This is amazing. That's really sweet. Okay, hand is freezing. So Ooh, great. Boy, that baby flies good. <laughs> oh, my hand is absolutely frozen. I got to get it in here. Hurry. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. My hand. By the way, it's hard to hand launch with the transmitter mitten, so that's why I didn't use one. This is a real pleasing plane to fly. I'm gonna put my high def camera on it next time.